course the idea of doing less of this while still getting the results would appeal to many. But can artificial intelligence combined with science make it possible? This is Carol and it takes HIT training to a whole new level. Using AI, it tries to make the workout as hard as it can for you. And this is all based around the concept that two 20-second sprints in the midst of an eight-minute gentle cycle can do you as much good as a 45-minute run. It replicates what's known as laboratory HIT, high-intensity interval training that would usually be carried out in a lab with scientists. They'd be able to look at your data and understand your fat muscle balance, creating the personalised formula and the resistance that you need. Here, the AI becomes the scientist. A few setup rides evaluating your physiology before optimising the workouts for you. It's not about how long you spend exercising. It is not about volume. How much you sweat is not linked to effectiveness. The way exercise works is what it does to you at a molecular level. Now it's almost hard to keep going as hard as you can for that 20 seconds. But as soon as it's over and it's really easy again, it feels like it was absolutely pathetic. Because what you're trying to achieve is something called rapid glycogen depletion. And that only happens when you hit your maximum power that you are literally capable of. We will know if you hit super maximal or not based on the amount of time you've held your peak power for. It's impossible to hold it for more than a fraction of a second. Now I'm no scientist, so all I can do is tell you how I felt. And even though I'm sure my heart rate was being pushed to the right limits, I was certainly going as hard as I could for those 20 second bursts, I still didn't feel like I'd done a workout afterwards. So each time I did this, I went for a good run after. Okay, so this didn't fulfill my workout desires, but there is some science to the 20 second bursts. You only have to look at world athletic records to back up the idea that the body's ability to maintain maximal power deteriorates after the first 20 seconds of pushing to the limit, no matter who you are. The average pace maintained for 100 and 200 metres can't be continued for sprints that are longer than 20 seconds. So for Carol, this means that the user is being able to do the bits that they'll work the hardest at and get the greatest benefit from. And the rest is pretty easy. Even if only repeated, say, four to six times, over a course of about two weeks, you can see improvements in fitness that are kind of equivalent to what you would get from much longer, sort of typical endurance, continuous training. It tends to have a more a clear effect on the heart and circulatory system. But for instance, as an example, this won't help you lose weight. Weight loss with exercise is about energy expenditure. Wow, I have found a whole other side to Carol. 60 eight second sprints in 20 minutes and I have never worked out like it. Okay, let's do this. Speed up and sprint. The only thing that did disappoint me a little bit, though, was that the AI works based on your last workout rather than in real time. So if you're feeling a bit tired, it's not really going to respond to that. I can't deny being pushed to my limits, though. And in the longer term, the aim is for the AI to be able to react better in the moment, maybe telling you just by holding onto the handlebars that you're too tired today. I guess we can only hope. <sighs> Do you need much more?